Hey, this is Daniel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this mechanically moving arm. It is easily animatable, it moves dynamically, and the pistons move accurately. The techniques in this video can be used for all kinds of things, from robots to tractors, desk lamps, to what I'll be copying in this video, which is my microphone holding arm. So let's start by making some basic arm support pieces. So type Shift A, go to Mesh and Cube, tab into Edit Mode. S to scale it down, and then SZ to scale it up on the Z axis. The, these arms do need to be pretty narrow and very tall. So let's do it like that. Awesome. Let's go to object mode so we can see those edges a little better. And if you want this to look really nice later on, let's add a very slight bevel. So very low level. I'll add three, three segments to it. And yeah, because in the real world, very few things are completely sharp edged, right? Unless it's a knife. So I'm going to round those edges. So I'm going to move this down and then alt d to move this right there so the exact copy if i edit and do anything to this it's going to happen to this one over here as far as modeling now let's make the joint piece that goes in the middle so shift a add another cube gz to move it up here oh, let's turn off our snapping we don't need that right now tab in edit mode sx to make it very thin let's make sure we're on the individual origins not that 3d cursor so we can actually move things a little bit easier model things a little bit easier uh, now I'm in edit mode and I'm going to move everything I've just made off the origin point. See the origin point is still in the middle. Uh, this is good because we can add a modifier, uh, a mirror modifier. There we go. So now we only have to model one part and Blender does the rest for us. You will learn very quickly. I am very lazy and I like to do things efficiently. Move this up. There's going to be screws here for the joints. And let's move this back piece up like so, okay. We can grab these short edges, which is I'm in edge select mode and hold shift to select multiple edges. And grab this one down there and that one down there. And now we can do control B for bevel around these edges. Awesome. Let's make some screws real easy. Uh, first, I'm gonna put my cursor right here. So shift S and cursor to select it. That's just put your 3D cursor whatever to whatever you have selected. And then we can add objects and it'll be right there. So we don't have to scroll around and we don't lose stuff. R, Y, 90, let's scale it down, and G, X, let's move it out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to press number three to get a flat side view, and let's put it where it needs to be in order to go through into the arm. Yep, right there. Uh, we haven't uh, shaded, smoothed anything. I'm going to select this piece, W, auto shade smooth, auto shade smooth, and auto shade smooth. Cool. Now let's turn this cylinder here. Oh, let's go back to face select. Let's turn the cylinder into a screw. So I'm looking at mine, it's literally right in front of my face. So this should be no excuse for it to not look good. <laughs> um, e, and let's shrink this down. And now a bolt's gonna go right here. So I'm going to make another cylinder, but I'm going to, before I size it down, give it six sides, okay? Now we can S and scale it down real small. R, oh, R Y 90, there we go. I always mix up my directions. Now there's actually a little torus, like a little donut right here, which is a real soft little round thing. So let's see if I can fake it by using inset on this cylinder, extruding it out to pop out. Yep, I to inset there and there. Now I'm gonna grab these sharp edges. I'm holding alt and I'm selecting an edge and it gets the whole edge loop. I can do it here or here. You just gotta be real careful where you click. Now control B to bevel these. Yes, awesome. And this has basically the tip of the screw sticking out. I'll just leave it right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, good enough for me. Oh, I need to bevel this hex nut here. So just uh, select any of these faces, press L. It grabs all the linked faces, control B. Let's just do like three faces. Yeah, that looks great. And then shade smooth. Nice. Now we only have to make that one time and we can duplicate this all over the place. It's awesome. Before we do that, let's make a texture. Let's call it bolt or nut. I don't know. They're the same. They're all silver shiny. <laughs> So three for side view. Now here's the trick to make duplicates of this without having to make them over and over is Alt D and then type in an axis so we can slide it. Then grab both of these. Alt D Z, move it up here. This one needs to go up higher. Awesome, just like that. And then we can also copy these over to the other side by uh, basically setting our 3D cursor in the middle here. So Shift S, cursor to, oops, sorry. Shift S, cursor to select it. So the cursor's in the middle. Grab all these bolts and we're gonna copy them to the flip side. So Alt D, enter, change your origin back to 3D cursor and scale them on the X, but negative one. So we just scaled it based on 3D cursor, negative one, 
popped them over here. And I, I, does, I do think that messes up the normals when you do that inverted scale, but uh, I don't think it's going to be noticeable for what we're doing here. Um, so cool. Now let's grab these arms and move some up here. We're going to connect them up to these arms up here. So shift D and I still have my 3d cursor selected. So I can actually just rotate them up like this, negative 45 and then another 90 negative 90. There we go. So we get a nice, um, 90 degree or 45 degree angle. Let's put them in place right there. And then this one can be back right there. Now, these are all going to move mechanically with each other like you would expect. And we're even going to add some little pistons here, which could be springs or hydraulics. If you're making something, you know, heavy duty, that's actually like motorized. Let's copy this brace here and the bolts. So I'm just going to box select everything and then deselect these arms, which I don't want. So now I have that joint plate and the screws. Let's shift D and move it up here. And I'm not sure what kind of angle I'm going to put these at. Go back to mid, mid, medium point so we can rotate them all together. Maybe like this, and we can, you know, somehow the mic would be connected to here. I'm not really gonna, I'm not gonna make a microphone. Um, but yeah, let's just do that. I'm trying to line up the arms with the bolts. Okay, that's good enough for our purposes. And um, let's make a little bit of a base, Alt D Z, and I'm gonna rotate it basically just upside down. Yeah, cool. And then I'm um, just going to delete these bolts down here and we could make like a base of some kind just so there's something down there. Now let's talk about these moving arm pieces. The origin of anything that moves is really important. So we need to have the origin of each of these arms basically where the joint is. So let's zoom in down here and um, we're going to set an origin point where this screw is and then that screw. And then we're gonna change the origin of each of these arms to be those locations. So select a screw, shift S, and on the bottom, cursor selected, okay? Now select your arm, W, go to set origin and origin to 3D cursor, there you go. Oh, uh, look what's happening. It's <laughs> because I alt D'd all these earlier, uh, they're all messed up. So let's just delete these arms. We'll put them back later, okay? But hey, this actually is not bad because we got the origin point fixed. Now just shift D. Oh, well, let's make a material real quick. Call it arm. It's probably gonna be a black metal later. Just make it black. There you go. Okay. So with the, this thing selected, let's just shift D and move it right over to be right there. Awesome. And then because we had to delete our own ones earlier because I messed up, let's shift D those. Rotate them negative 45. There we go. Try your best to line it up to that screw. It doesn't ultimately matter. It's not going to affect the mechanics, but it makes things more realistic. Awesome. All right, cool. So now if something rotates, look, it rotates where it should. Now, speaking of which, let's limit these rotations to only being the right rotation. So from a side view, it's only going to rotate one axis, which is X. Everything is moving on the X axis. So we can actually lock the Y and Z in the object properties. Click on that little lock, click on the lock, click on the lock and lock it. Awesome. So now if we select it and just press R, even RR, which normally freely rotates stuff, it can only rotate on one axis, and that's awesome. It has to be right in the middle. Let's grab both of these bolts. Here's a good trick. When you have two objects, you can set the 3D cursor right in the middle of them too. So shift S, there we go, right in the middle of the two, I should have said, and it's like a medium point. So let's fix this origin, W origin to 3D cursor. Yep, nothing changed with the mirror, but the origin is where it needs to be. We're also going to create an empty. We're gonna be using some empties here. Let's just make spheres because they're easy to scale and grab. And we're going to parent the uh, empty to the rod. So grab the empty first and then the rod and press control P for parent. So we're just gonna use that first option there. Awesome, so you know, with the, if this rod moves or when it moves, the empty stays with it. Now we wanna lock this, um, this joint piece to the location of that empty. So go to constraints. This is where the magic is. I do not like bones. I hate armatures. I hate rigging. Um, and so I'm basically finding a bunch of workarounds. So we're going to copy location of what? Of that empty. I'm in a side view. Oh, I need to fix the base there. <laughs> Oopsie. That's what happens when you move origins around things, things move around. So if I grab this arm and just press R, Look, that joint piece is, is copying the location of that sphere empty 
and it is not moving though, which is great. I like that. Now let's do the same thing with this, but we're actually gonna make this copy the rotation of this. So the inside arms are gonna be the main ones. If you wanna move something, pose it or animate it, we're only gonna be selecting the inside arms. The top ones, we can actually make them non-selectable so we don't accidentally do that. But first we need to set up the constraint. So add constraint, copy rotation of what? Of that guy. So, oh yeah, look at that. Boom, they're dancing. We can also limit the rotation to like not go any further than this with another constraint. Um, that is uh, limit ro limit rotation right there. But I'm not gonna do that right now. Uh, we're, we're actually doing pretty good here. Now we need to parent these guys to this because wherever that joint moves in the middle, this thing, we want the arms to stay with it. Just like that. Oh, the bolts. <laughs> the bolts are not staying with it. I can see in my outliner, these first eight cylinders, I think are the ones, yep, the first yeah, first eight here from cylinder to cylinder 007. <laughs> Those are the first ones I made. So I'm going to parent them to this. Control P. Awesome. All right, so it's working. I like it. Now let's grab this outer arm that we don't ever want to accidentally grab and just turn off selectable. If you don't have the arrow there, go to your filter options and turn on the selectable switch. You can turn it on or off. So now look, I cannot click on it. I can't do it. And that's good. I don't want to accidentally do that. It's right here. I can select it over here, but not in the viewport. Now let's copy this rotation from this one. Cool. And then let's do that same empty thing again. So shift a add a sphere empty. And this uh, sphere is going to be parented to this guy. So it moves with the end of the arm. And then this is going to copy the location of this, but we need to fix the origin to be right in the middle. Remember I grabbed those two bolts. I grabbed these two bolts, which allows me to put the 3D cursor right in the middle perfectly. And then we're gonna fix the origin of this uh, by doing W set origin to 3D cursor. There we go. Now, earlier I did Alt D and Shifty. For this one, this is a Shifty, which means if I edit this, it's totally different. This one has a different origin than this one. So um, yeah, if you followed me earlier, you should have done it correctly, which is a Shifty, not an Alt D, which allows these to have different unique origins. Anyway, we got the origin fixed for this guy. And we're going to basically do that copy location now. So go to constraints, copy location of what? Of the sphere. Now, as this moves, yep, we got to get the bolts now. Let's see, which bolts are they? It starts with cylinder eight up to what, 16? Oh, minus one of those. I use control and double click, it uh, deselects it over in the outliner. So yes, I got all the bolts and then shift select the top joint plate and parent them with control P. Awesome. Oh yeah, I like that. Now we can animate this and tell it to do whatever we want. Um, now let's put some, so, some cylinders on here that could be pneumatic pistons or hydraulics. They could also be springs, you know, for something like this. So let's go with pneumatic pistons because then that's going to be more popular. More people are going to be adding pistons and hydraulics to things than, you know, spring tension arms. So let's um, go down here and make a little piston. So shift A. First, we're going to make the joint. Let's put our sides to 32. Remember, I made the bolt earlier. That's why it was at six right there. And uh, W shade smooth. Now let's move it out here a little bit. Let's tab in edit mode, rotate it 90 degrees. Okay. We're going to make this a little bit smaller. This is going to be basically the joint that the piston is going to be connected to. Now you can add as much detail as you want with hard surface modeling. Extrude along normals there. I don't want to focus on that too much in this video because that would make it really long. And if you're probably just here to learn the mechanics and the moving parts. So let's put our origin point right in the middle of these faces. By the way, I held alt and selected one of them and it grabbed the whole edge loop. So shift S, cursor to selected. I'm using that a lot in this video. And cylinder, there we go. Now this is going to be the, I think it's called the main cylinder, which is the big one. S Z, let's move it up a little bit. There we go. And then the small cylinder is going to be inside here. Another little touch of realism. Let's make a little lip. So I press, pressed E and enter. Let's say I have this whole, I have this extruded face that I can now make a different scale. And then E, there we go. So that is the edge. This looks like a Mario, a Mario pipe, right? And then we're going to add another cylinder, which is a separate object. This is important. So this is one object down here with an origin point that is perfectly in the middle of the circular, circular piece down here which means it will, you know, rotate perfectly around its origin. 
That's part of the mechanics we're going to do in a second with constraints. And we need a top cylinder as a separate object. So shift A, make another cylinder, size it down with scale. There we go. Awesome. Okay. And similarly, we want to have a little joint up here. So I'm going to make a cylinder, rotate it sideways. There we go. Oh, shade smooth. Awesome. All right, we have our piston, but one thing's wrong with this top piece. The origin point is not in the right place. So how do we fix that? Well, oh, I already have the 3D cursor where I need it to be. I just need to set my origin point to that spot, which I've been doing a lot. So let's do that one more time in case you missed it. I'm going to select something that does perfectly around where the joint origin needs to be. Shift S, cursor to selected. All right, it's right in the middle. Now get out of edit mode with tab and with your object selected, W and set origin to 3D cursor. There it is. Now the orange dot is right in the middle. And when I rotate it, it moves the way it should, which is what X? Yes, everything's on X. So let's lock the Y and Z again. Lock Y and Z so that things can only rotate like that. Great. Now we're ready to start putting things in place. So let's decide where these things need to be. For them to move accurately, they need to actually work how things really work in the real world. So I'm going to put these right there. And this top joint is actually going to connect to the top arm, right? So that as they move, the space between the two contracts and the piston can actually move them. You could also put this right here, but then the movement is limited. Um, so I'm going to put this right here. Not good leverage, but it'll work. Now we need to make these face each other and we need to parent them so that they stick with these arms. So first let's do the um, directional constraint trick. So go to constraint, do damped track and select what it needs to point to. Okay. We're, we're pointing at a target. You can even see a line there. See that blue line. That means it's tracking this. So anywhere I move this, it points pretty sweet, but it's in the wrong orientation. So let's try some different orientations here till we get it. There it is. Negative Z worked for this one. Awesome. So it's pointing down. So wherever this moves, it'll always be there. And now we need to do the same thing to this. However, I found that there is a bit of a glitch in Blender where if I make this constraint looking at this and this is looking at this, you're looking at each other, it'll start freaking out and flickering. So let's put an empty right here. So shift S, put a 3D cursor there, shift A, empty. Let's do another sphere. All right. Now this is what this sphere right here is what this bottom cylinder is going to point to. So damps track, select the sphere. And I think it was negative Z, positive Z. There it is. Awesome. So look at that. All right. Next we need to parent the bottom cylinder to the base. So select the cylinder first and then the base control P object. And we need to connect this one or parent it to this arm. So select the top cylinder, select the arm, control P, object. Now, let's see if it works. Oh, I forgot to parent the sphere to the arm as well. Because remember, the sphere is, the sphere empty, is where the bottom cylinder is pointing to at all times. So now, yes, it works. I love it. Now, let's make the top cylinder a little bit longer so that we can accommodate movement like this. So... Tab into edit mode, grab that face control plus plus to grab the little lip that we made there. And let's move it along the normals. So let's go to normals. There we go. Now we can perfectly just stretch it out to meet where it needs to be, like at a maximum length. And let's test it all the way in, all the way out. Yeah, cool. That makes me happy. Now this is not completely accurate. We should probably, you know, make a little joint there. Awesome. <laughs> and by the way, this cylinder is so overpowered for this tiny desk uh, mic stand. This is just like ridiculous amount of power. Um, we can make another and we can really just copy and paste this, which is a really cool thing about this. And I think I'm going to make an asset pack of just pistons and cylinders that you guys can drop into your robots and mechanical stuff. And it'll be super easy and quick. So let's do a copy and paste from a side view. Shift D. <laughs> and let's place this right here. And we need to reparent things. So this needs to be parented to this arm now. There. And then this and this need to be parented to this arm. Control P. We can do multiple at once. Now we need to move them into place. So just drag them where they need to, where you want them to connect to, whether it's here or here. Awesome. Let's test it out. Yes. And you definitely want to limit rotation um, so this doesn't happen. 
So yeah, let's do that. So let's see, where does it hit? Where, where do we have problems? We have problems around 80 degrees and up to eight degrees is good. So let's do a constraint limit rotation along the which axis, the X. Minimum was eight, maximum was 80, I believe. Oh yeah, now it will not go. I can move it, but it stops right at 80. Ah, that makes me happy. You may be thinking this is so much more work than bones. And, you know, I, I can't really disagree with you because I don't have any experience in bones because when I, every time I try to do them, I hate them and it's just so annoying. Let's do this limitation. So, oh, we got to look at our rotation numbers. Minimum, is it, are we going down? We're going up. Well, we're going down. We're in the negatives. So minimum negative 66, maximum, I'll say positive 54. Okay. Constraint. Limit rotation X, minimum negative 66, maximum positive 54. Chink and chink, awesome. You can also press Alt-R to reset all the rotations, or in this case, you know, just X really, to zero. So zero, and then what is this? Yeah, that one's zero now. Now, what about springs? There is a way to make an object stretch from point A, which is the base, to point B, which could be a target empty. Um, that would be useful for springs. So let's make a spring setup here. Uh, there actually is a way to make springs in Blender using the curves. So shift A, it's in curves and curve spirals and then Archimedean. All right, so now we can do, turn's gonna have to be a lot because we're gonna make this thing, you know, a pretty tight wound spring. Let's put our height down somewhere around there. Our uh, turns are, let's see, 80. Radius definitely needs to be smaller around there does that look about right maybe a few more a few more turns let's double it 160 and half the height so some 0.05 yeah there we go so it's nice and tight all right tab out of edit mode let's go to the curve settings give it some thickness some depth i'm holding shift while i turn this up by the way there we go and the origin point is it at the bottom it is great that's what we want so let's parent this to the arm Control p okay and then we're going to make this point towards an empty. I'm just going to copy this empty. It's already parented to the right arm. So just move it right there. And we're going to use this as the, um, I don't know what to call it, like the stretch target for the spring. So select your spring in constraints, go to stretch to, and we're going to select the sphere. Now, the weird thing is meshes when using this constraint have to be going along the Y axis. So I'm going to turn off the constraint. I should have done this earlier, but now, you know, tab into edit mode. And we need to rotate this 90 degrees. I have my 3D cursor already at the bottom. So R90, there we go. And now when you turn this on, yes, it's stretching. So let's see as we move this, what happens? As we, yep, look at that. It's stretching far and stretching near. That's great. It's not quite reaching though. So we need to make it a little taller. Let's turn this off. And uh, again, from our 3D cursor, which is at the origin right here at the base, we can just S Y stretch it a little bit right there. Turn it on. Yeah, that looks good. And to cover this weirdness up, we can make a little joint or, you know, some kind of like cylinder thing that it's connected to. Like, I don't know, this is a terrible modeling, but yeah, you get the point. I think you could make a little loop with that top and curve. Right, this is still a curve object, which is cool. So we could just like have it, you know, loop up around or whatever. That's something for another tutorial. Um, and yeah, so now we've got a piston working against a spring arm. <laughs> now, when you want to pose these things, you have to be in individual origin mode so that the origin, which is the base of the joint, will be where the, the pivoting is. If you're in like 3D cursor, look, my 3D cursor is right here. This happens. It's shifting out of socket. So be careful. That is the only downside to using this method versus uh, versus bones. Oh, we didn't parent this little joint doohickey. Control P. There we go. All right. Cool. So we got moving pistons. We got stretching springs. Looks great. Also notice the base of the spring is not where it needs to be, but that's kind of cool because look, it actually will just stretch anywhere, anywhere to that origin point. Oh, also one the weird thing about the stretch, um, stretch to constraint is that look, it makes it like get fatter. And look at that, that's crazy. So to change that, uh, we need to go and turn off volume variation. I don't know why it calls that volume. Should be like scale, but yeah, now the scale will not be changing. Awesome. 
And that's how you do it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, ask down below. And I'd love to see what you guys make with this technique. Have fun and look forward to a really cool asset pack coming soon of pistons and cylinders. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.